Omega. We know you've missed going back to school to meet with your friends, resume your activities, and just be able to get back to how life was like on campus. But for the UMians who didn't get to set foot on campus yet, whether you are in basic education, senior high school, or college, let's take a little trip to the campus you can hopefully get to visit soon as you finish your education with UM. Luckily, we've got some of our beloved teachers to show you around UM's colleges and campuses so you'll know what to expect when you come back to school. It's only proper to start to the place where it all began. The UM Bolton and Embassy Campus were among the first structures to be put up as the University of Mindanao was starting to make a name for itself 75 years ago. Here at the Bolton site, you can find many of the offices for student services like the Registrar, Student Accounting Office, and Cashier among others. There's also a canteen where students and employees can purchase healthy food. Going further into Bolton campus, you can find on the first floor the College of Legal Education, where aspiring lawyers take their Juris Doctor degrees. There is even a dedicated library for law students across the cool and shaded quadrangle. On your way to the staircase to get the second floor, you get to pass by the AVR3, where lots of programs and other small gatherings are held. Going up to the second floor, you can find the Office of the College of Business Administration Education. UM is the only school in Mindanao granted a Center of Excellence by CHED for its business and management programs, as well as Level 4 accreditation by the PACOCOA. So if you're planning on a career in business-related dealings, the CBAE is for you. Our college offers the following programs under the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Major in Entrepreneurship, Legal Management, Real Estate Management, Marketing Management, Financial Management, Human Resource Management, and the new program Major in Business Analytics. The third floor also houses our expansive library and information center. That covers the Bolton side. Let's head on over to the Embassy Campus. Across the UN Bolton is the Embassy side, and it's named that way because it used to be the grounds for Japanese Embassy back in World War II. Today, it is a sprawling area that houses the gymnasium for large UM events, our admission office, our Center for Health Services, or the student clinic and the external relation office out front on the first floor. Going up, you can find the International Affairs Office where matters for foreign exchange students are processed among others. And walking further, you will find the office of the Senior High School Department. Outside of the Embassy Campus, on the Ponciano side, we have the UM Multitest Diagnostic Center, which offers various laboratory services like blood testing, x-ray, and doctor consultations. UM Bolton and Embassy Campus are located at the heart of downtown Davao, so it's easy to commute from here to many other places you might need to go. And speaking of which, did you know that UM has a campus at Matina? I'll send you over to our teacher friends in Matina Campus and they can show you around. We're now inside the University of Mindanao's largest campus, the 28-hectare Matina Campus, encompasses the Matina area going up to Ma'a. Right beside the Gravahan exit is the basic education building where it caters from kindergarten up to junior high school students with lots of space for learning and play. Going further inside the campus, you'll spot the four-story business engineering building. Its first and second floor houses laboratories for engineering programs. It is the premier engineering school for its level 4 accreditation granted by the Bakukoa and the Center of Development Studies by the Commission in Higher Education. UM College of Engineering offers the following programs. Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, major in Structural, 
water resource, transportation, and geotechnical. The third floor of the BE building is home to Davao Regents roster of top notchers of the CPA licensure examination. The College of Accounting Education has level 3 accreditation from PACACOA and is certified by the Commission on Higher Education as a Center of Development. The College of Accounting Education offers the following programs Bachelor of Science in Accountancy, Bachelor of Science in Internal Auditing, Bachelor of Science in Accounting Information System, Bachelor of Science in Management Accounting. The Learning and Information Center takes up the entire topmost floor of the B building. It houses all the university's books available for borrowing. Let's take a scenic trip to the College of Hospitality Education. Located near the UM Athena Gymnasium, the College of Hospitality Education has level 3 accreditation from Pakukoa and offers the following programs. Bachelor of Science in Hospitality Management and Bachelor of Science in Tourism Management. The College of Hospitality Education also has industry-level facilities like the La Spezia Mini Hotel, the Function Hall, and the Kitchen and Bakery areas. Located behind the gymnasium is the UM Hangar, where students can test their inventions and other experiments. The Hangar holds the university's Coleoptera Research Center, the first university-based center in the Philippines dedicated to study the conservation and cataloging of Philippine beetle species. Every large university, such as UM, has a place where students gather for major events. And UM doesn't just have its Bolton Gymnasium. We also have the Matina Gymnasium too, equipped with fold-away bleachers and professional standard flooring for the courts. The gym is the perfect venue for sporting and other extracurricular activities. Despite being a bustling school, there's plenty of space in UM Matina for some quiet time and to be surrounded by nature. UM Matina has a mini forest with tables and benches because UM believes that learning and rest isn't just limited to the walls of a room. Is this tour making you a little hungry? Across the gymnasium is the university canteen and food court, which serves a variety of affordable meals, snacks, and drinks, where students can eat comfortably. Tables are regularly sanitized and electric fans are provided. Let's head down to the JT building. Named after the school's founder, Guillermo E. Torres, the building is home to Davao Region's producer of top-notchers in the licensure examinations for teachers. The College of Teacher Education offers the following programs. Bachelor of Elementary Education, Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Special Needs Education, Bachelor of Physical Education, and Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in Biological Sciences, English, Social Studies, Filipino, and Mathematics. Also, found on the first floor of the GET building is the Audiovisual Room 2, an air-conditioned and carpeted, fully equipped facility with cinema-style folded seating, which is frequently used for different programs. The second and third floor of the GET building is occupied by the premier criminology school in Davao, the College of Criminal Justice Education. The CCJE offers Bachelor of Science in Criminology and Bachelor of Science in Industrial Security Management. Heading further inside the campus, away from GET, will reach the DPT building. Named after former school president Dolores P. Torres, the four-story building houses the mini auditorium, the quality management office, research and publication center, institute of pedagogical and assessment center, some laboratories, and pocket gardens on its first floor. Located on the DPT's second floor is the College of Arts and Sciences Education. CASE offers the following programs, Bachelor of Arts in English, Bachelor of Arts in Communication, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, Bachelor of Science in Agroforestry, Bachelor of Science in Forestry, Bachelor of Science in Biology, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, 
Bachelor of Science in Public Administration, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and Bachelor of Science in Social Work. The third floor of the DPT building houses the College of Health Sciences Education or the CHSE. CHSE offers Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, and Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. Sharing the floor with CHSE is the College of Computing Education. CCE offers Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, Bachelor of Science in Information System, Bachelor of Science in Entertainment and Multimedia Computing, major in Game Development and Digital Animation. The topmost floor of the DPT building is home to the Creative Academic Unit of UM, the College of Architecture and Fine Arts Education. CAFAE offers Bachelor of Science in Architecture, Bachelor of Fine Arts major in Painting. Let's head back down and you'll see that across the DPT building is our Professional Schools building. It is led by its Dean, Dr. Eugenio S. Guhau, and serves to bring globally recognized ISO standard and PACOCOA accredited postgraduate and doctorate degrees to more Dabawenios. We're about to head out now. But before we leave, let's take a look at the UM Oval Track and Sports Stadium. It has a 400-meter rubberized track suitable for track and field training and other sporting activities. The Sports Stadium served as the venue for the 2019 Palarong Pambansa. Thanks for joining this campus tour! Oh, by the way, even though UM is already a formidable university that is second in the whole Philippines, to offer the most number of Pakukoa accredited programs, we do not rest. The administration keeps on working very hard just to be sure that more Filipinos here and abroad are able to obtain quality, affordable, and open education. Hope to have you here at UM soon, Ga! All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the University of Mindanao. And you just had seen you know, the two campuses of UM, the Bolton campus, and also the Matina campus. All right, and hopefully, you no, know, you can visit also the school uh, to face to face you know, soon, you no, know, once our quarantine um, restrictions will be lifted. So, we are here today, you know, for for this what we call immersion webinar you know, for you senior high school students, especially the grade 12 students. It's actually um, a initiative of the University of Mindanao in support of the Department of Education work um, immersion implementation for all um, senior high schools you know, uh, during our situation right now that we are in the pandemic. So we know that the current crisis limits you guys, you know, grade 12 students, to actually have that opportunity to be in a certain um, institution 
Now we're in it is your uh, these are the partners no of your school no in order to um give you no um ideas on what are those things no that a certain person doing in a certain um institution and for of course perform duties and responsibilities to be given to you by that institution and also experience those usual type of pre and also post immersion activities so that's why you have this um um event no this afternoon a webinar no for you to have that exposure in those um different um um, um immersion work all right so um this afternoon no you'll uh, be learning a lot no in terms of this uh, topic no or immersion no the arts and sciences um immersion webinar so we'll be focusing on arts on arts and sciences and these are related no to those um students or grade 12 students who are in the strand of humes and also in gas so this will give you a lot of exposure and be able to um give you insights of what are the things that you're going to decide no as you will graduate no in the senior high school program soon and i know you're very excited for that some of you would like to uh, have their work already that others would like to go to higher education and this um, webinar um, brought to you by the university of minanao will help you decide on those decision makings a life ninyo all right so all right so for a while so in a while no um we will be starting no a webinar session all right so you can actually um let your classmates no join no even though they are not in the humes or a gas strand as long as they want not to know um this immersion um webinar no they want uh, they have they are they have the interest so we've given you the link no via email so you can just copy and paste that one and give it to your friends no so that they can also join and and they are welcome you know, in our Zoom. And as you go along with our webinar this afternoon, if you can experience um, difficulties in terms of your connections, since we're going to have a three-hour webinar, you can also go to our YouTube channel, the University of Manana Official. We are also streaming live there so, so that you can still join our webinar. So stick around, huh? And enjoy the rest of our webinar this afternoon so very soon we will start our program All right, so this time let's start our immersion webinar this afternoon eh, through um, our prayer. So let's take a look at this audiovisual presentation, a song to be given to us by University of Mindanao Choral. Oh, 
All right, so again, good afternoon and welcome to University of Mindanao Senior High School Immersion Webinar. This is our fifth um, episode no, of this um, webinar. And this afternoon, no, we will be focusing on, on arts and sciences um, topics. All right, so we are very happy no, to see you guys here this afternoon and we would like to recognize those schools and students na nandito ngayon sa ating Zoom. So we have students no, from the University of Mindanao. Hello, hello sa inyo. If you can turn on your camera and also um, kaway kaway kay Jan so that our um, speakers no, later will see no, sino yung mga nandito sa Zoom natin. We would also like to recognize no, the, the students no, from the Kidapawan City National High School. Hello, hello sa inyo. And we would also like to recognize students from Kapatagan National High School. Hello, hello sa inyo. Welcome to UM. We would also like to um, recognize no, students from Davao City National High School. And we also like to recognize students from Digos um, City um, Adventist Academy. Hello, welcome, DCAA. All right. Okay, so most of you guys are from UM, from the University of Mindanao, Kidapawan National High School, Kapatagan. And I believe they're also from um, Nieves, no, National High School. All right, so welcome. Uh, dito sa ating webinar this afternoon. We also have from Badas National High School. I think this is from Davo Oriental. Hello, welcome. Nieves Villarica National High School. Welcome to our webinar this afternoon. I believe you are excited. No? Excited na ba? Can you have a thumbs up there sa ating mga students? Ayan. All right. Okay, so um, this webinar is actually a proactive response of the University of Binanao no, to provide free webinars to you guys, grade 12 students, no, because nga of this pandemic. No, kaya we will discuss this afternoon various topics related to your subject work immersion. So the topics now will cover about pre-employment requirements, about arts and sciences um, 
um, topics. And also, we will be talking about the University of Mindanao. And so, without further ado, no, let's start our um, topics no, this afternoon. And so, we'll start with the pre-employment requirements. So, these pre-employment requirements na, na topic, no, we'll talk about writing a winning cover letter and resume, how to ace the interview, work ethics, and also social media etiquette. And for you, uh, grade 12 students, these are very necessary no, mga topics in you based on the work immersion subject. And to give us um, more information with regards to this pre-employment requirements, together with us this afternoon is the Vice President for External Relations and International Affairs of the University of Mindanao, Dr. Reynaldo C. Castro. Sir? Thank you very much, Benji. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Pero may problema at ako sa lighting ko. Anyway, don't mind it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I'll share my screen. Uh, good afternoon to our senior high school students. Yeah. As mentioned by Benji, this is the fifth batch of our uh, senior high school immersion. No? Off ko na lang kaya yung aking camera. Uh -huh. Stop video. All right. There you go. <clears throat> lang, ha? So this afternoon, uh, there are three topics no, that I'm going to share to you, to our senior high students. Well, you've heard that's the bell in the campus. So I'm in the campus right now. And every time that subjects change from one hour to another uh, schedule, uh, you will hear the bell ringing. So that's the bell in the campus in the University of Mindanao for our senior high school students in case you will choose to enroll in the University of Mindanao. All right, so there are three topics that I'm going to share to you this afternoon. Well, the topic is all about pre-employment requirements and why you call them pre-employment requirements because these are the things that you are going to prepare you know, before your employment or Practically, these are the things that you need to prepare when you're in a job application process, all right? First up, we're going to talk about how are you going to write an impressive application letter or popularly known as cover letter and resume. We're going to talk about how are you going to uh, perform well, how are you going to ace in a job interview, and what are the social media etiquette that you need to observe, all right? Let's start with writing an application letter. Why write a cover letter? Well, first reason is that to show your communication skills, your writing skills. Senior high students, regardless of your strand, regardless of your course, regardless of your degree, regardless of your future work, there will come a point in your work, in your career, that you are going to write. No, that you are going to write, whether you're into criminology, when you're, whether you're into the more if you're into mass communication, because most of you are in the arts and sciences. No, Most likely, most of you are interested to enroll in arts and sciences program. So there will be a lot of writing that you are going to have when you, when you enter into your career. No? So that's why the first, uh, the first way of assessing your competence, whether you can write, whether you can perform this function, is through your application letter. So, makasulat ka ba, no? Kaya mo ba talaga magsulat basis sa iyong sample na application letter? All right. The second one is to highlight the purpose of the letter, why you have that letter, and introduce yourself to the reader. Okay? Third reason is that to give the reader an idea whether to continue reading the rest of their documents or not. Remember, senior high students, that uh, HR or those who will be reading your application letter, they are very busy people. No? So they don't have uh, so much time to read all your other documents. So, un sa maghatag sa ilaha o idea na okay ang imuhang mga the rest of your documents nakalagay sa isang folder, nakalagay sa isang envelope, malaking envelope, is that basahin mo na nila yung iyong application letter. All right? Now, how are you going to write your application letter? This is how. Now, these are the important elements in writing your application letter. Number one is, of course, you have your heading and then the date of writing. No? In the heading, well, kahit hindi application letter, no? kahit ibang type of letter, usually ito ang format na pwede ninyo i-follow. Okay? Kahit magsulat kayo, writing an application for college degree, 
uh, writing whatever letter, whatever type of uh, communication you are going to have. Usually, these are the elements that you need to observe. All right. Um, okay. After heading, you have their inside address. In the inside address, the contents in the inside address are the name of the addressee, no? the name of the person. Hindi pwede na walang pangalan. No? Dapat merong pangalan. Kung hindi ninyo alam ang pangalan, then you try to contact, you visit the company, you go there, and then you ask the company, you are interested to submit an application letter, and you want to ask for the name where you can address the letter of application. Right? Pwede ninyo gawin yon. Second is the title no the position of the person that you are writing to the name of the company and the address all right so these are the contents these are the components in the inside address after the inside address is the salutation ito senior high students uh, the application letter is a formal type of letter now because this is a formal type of letter then you have to be you have to maintain a formal tone in your letter. No? Formal tone. So, di ba nakikita natin sa mga letter, meron nakasulat, Dear Miss Santos. Parang ganyan, no? Or Dear Something Something. Di ba? Uh, since formal siya, wag nyo lagyan ng dear. Sulat nyo lang Miss Santos. Unless magkakilala na kayo ni Miss Santos or kakilala mo na at kilala ka nung padalhan mo ng letter, pwede mo lagyan ng dear. Pero kung hindi, wag mo lagyan ng dear. Okay? Okay. I hope that you were able to follow that. No? Next, after salutation, Miss Santos, in your application letter, senior high students, dapat observe kayo na meron lang kayong tatlong paragraph. No more than that. No? Huwag sa sobra ng tatlong paragraph ang inyong letter. At saka each paragraph, merong purpose yan. No? Merong purpose yan. The first paragraph in your letter, you mentioned there, since this is an application letter, you mentioned there, how did you get to know about the position? Paano mo nalaman na merong bakante ang company na yan? Nabasa mo ba sa newspaper? Narinig mo ba sa radio? Na, na ano mo ba, may somebody ba na nagsabi sa iyo, sinabihan ka ba ng kakilala o ng trabahante ng company na yan? Sandali, sandali. Oo, sinabihan ka ba na uh, mayroong bakante at mag-apply ka sa ganyang company? Then you mention that, no? Tell that, uh, tell that in, the, in the letter, alright? And then, of course, your interest for the position, okay? So that's the first paragraph. The second paragraph, that's where you are going to highlight your best qualifications. No? Now, in writing your best qualification, what are you going to do is that you can write, number one, your experience. Kung meron kang work-related experience, no? okay yan ang isulat mo. Or ano yung mga characteristics mo, attributes mo, personalities mo, meron ka which are relevant in the performance of the job no kung halimbawa kailangan niya marunong ka mag-operate ng machine or kailangan niya meron kang ganitong klasing skills you possess these skills meron ka bang ganung skills okay all right so that's in the second paragraph and you have their sample sinasabi niya dito i have 6 months of prior experience in marketing at ABC Telecom. My work has involved in participating sales and marketing caravan within the region and meeting potential clients in a fast-paced office setting. O, diba? So, sabi ko kanina, what are you going to highlight there kung meron kayo experience? Now, uh, kung perso kayo ng college, sa college, required kayo na mag-OJT, on-the-job training, no? internship. Yan yung inyong experience. Yan yung inyong exposure. So pwede nyo yan siya isight sa inyong application letter. Okay? Last paragraph. Closing paragraph. Now, senior high students, you cannot tell the HR, the interviewer, all everything about you, all your qualifications in one page letter. So what you can do is that you try to open, open doors, open possibilities of you meeting no, in person for job interview. Big sabihin, meron pa sana akong gustong i-share sa iyo, but you know, considering the limitation no, 
in the page in this application letter and I wish to share that to you in your more convenient time, in your most convenient time. So parang ganon, alam nyo yon, senior high, di ba? Okay. After that, complimentary close. No? You close, sasabihin mo sincerely, okay? Your name and then your signature. Do not forget to sign your letter, no? Ilagay ninyo ang inyong signature. All right. Okay. So ayan, meron kayo sample. That's how a sample looks like, no? Sample application letter, no? So nandiyan yung name, nandiyan yung date, Mr. Dexter Baluran, yan yung title, yan yung pangalan ng pinadalhan niyo ng letter, yung position niya at saka yung organization, Mr. Baluran. Okay? Colon. And then meron siyang tatlong paragraphs, no? All right? Okay. And then closing, sincerely name and then do not forget to sign your letter all right okay so that's a sample uh, letter na pwede ninyong gawin senior high students no sa klase pwede kayo mag-sample niyan no um, sa UM meron kaming subject na we we coach our students no how to write a letter tapos uh, ni-review namin chine-check namin no and we're giving feedback kung paano nila ma-improve ang kanilang pagsulat sa letter. Okay? Next up, next important document in your application is your resume. And it says here that the resume is your personal brochure to market yourself and it should give your potential employer a quick view of what you can do for them. So ang isang resume, pareho yan siya sa inyong senior high kung naghanap kayo ng school diba? or uh, naghanap kayo kung anong kurso ang kunin niyo sa college, di ba? Most likely, nagkukolekta kayo ng mga brochure, no? Uh, tinitingnan niyo ang mga website ng mga schools, di ba? Uh, nagtatanong-tanong kayo kung ano ang bagay na kurso para sa inyo, di ba? So the same thing sa isang application process at lalo na sa isang resume. It contains an information about you specifically that fits the requirement of the position. Okay? Huwag ka magsulat ng any information in your resume that has no relevance to the requirement of the position. Okay? Huwag niyo isulat yan. No? Kasi limited lang ang pages ng ating resume. Now, kung bagong graduate ka sa college, ang advice doon, huwag sobra two pages ang kopya ng inyong resume. Kasi alam naman, halimbawa ako HR, alam ko naman na bagong graduate ka hindi dapat maraming pages ang isubmit mo sa akin. Okay? Alright. Sige. So for new graduates just like you, you can list your accomplishments in school. No? Anong mga na-achieve din sa eskwelahan? Do not worry about not having work-related accomplishments. You can pick out those school accomplishments that show responsibility, dependability, cooperative spirit, and the like. So itong ganitong klaseng sitwasyon, senior high students, it says that when you're in school, do not just be a plain student, which means that you also have to engage yourself in extracurricular activities. You participate in school activities. No, uh, If your teacher, for example, assign you, request you something or has given you special responsibility, then you have to take that because it will... What it will enhance, it will bolster your credentials. No, it will say something about your credentials, especially your respons responsibility uh, that you are a person that you can be trusted. Okay, all right. Now, when you write your resume, ito yung parang format, no, senior high. Start with your name, sulat niyo. Importante yan, of course. Your inyong address, specific address yung inyong contact number at saka yung inyong email address. Huwag nyo kalimutan, no? Dapat meron na talaga kayo contact number at saka email address. Madali lang naman magawa ngayon ng email address, no? Diba? Kasi hindi pwede na wala kang contact number at saka email address kasi you are about to enter into a professional world, no? And in most cases, easy way of communicating each other, especially in the professional world, is through contact number and email address. Your summary statement. Summary statement is a statement like one sentence, two sentence about you, no? Description about you. 
your work experience, kung wala kang work experience, then school experience, OJT, internship, no? exposure, yung mga ganon. Okay? And then kung meron kang OJT, exposure, work experience, ano ang iyong job responsibilities no? doon sa work mo? And then accomplishments, no? ano yung mga, mga awards mo, yung mga meron ka bang certificates of trainings and seminars just like the training that you have right now no itong uh, senior high school immersion webinar pwede na yan i think we are going to give you certificate no if you will fulfill comply our registration form then we will be giving you a certificate of completion so yung mga ganyan no those will be attached in your resume as evidences proof of evidence and then your education no kung ano natapos niyo okay All right. So your resume should answer this key question. These are the most important thing that you have to remind yourself when you are writing your resume, no, senior high. One and two talks about your qualifications, talks about your skills, your competence, your knowledge. Pag sinasabi mo skills, example, hard skills. Kung kailangan mo mag-operate ng isang machine, no, kailangan mo Uh, kailangan sa trabaho marunong ka ng mga Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel at saka Microsoft PowerPoint. Meron ka bang ganun? Marunong ka ba, no? So, 'yun yung i-emphasize mo sa iyong uh, resume, pagsulat ng iyong resume. Where have you worked before or is your experience relevant to my needs? So, itong questions 3 and 4 talk about your exposure no your experience no trabaho kung meron ka ng work experience okay questions five, five. Uh, do you have the right education and credentials talks about also your qualification no six talks about your personality your attitude no anong klasing tao ka okay ano yung inyong mga karakteristik sa limbawa ang trabaho kailangan ng outgoing personality no tapos mahiyain ka so hindi pwede mahiyain di ba kung halimbawa kailangan mo mag-speak ng ibang tao hindi pwede na mahiyain ka all right where can i contact you no paano ka makontak so yan ang isang example no how long should a resume be it says here i already mentioned that wag more than two pages no maximum of two pages What should I include in my personal data? In general, you avoid facts that may be used to discriminate against you. So example, ano man ang example ng information na dapat hindi kasali sa iyong resume. Yung height mo, no? yung, yung timbang mo, yung weight mo, yung religion mo. No? Hindi kasali yun. No? Yung, yung political affiliation, no? anong color mo na gusto. Hindi pwede yun. No? I mean, it has no relevance in your application after all. Okay? Should I put my photo in my resume? Dapat ba na lagyan ninyo ng picture ang inyong resume? Ang sagot ko, wag. No, wag. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman importante ang inyong picture unless nag-apply kayo as model. No? Kung nag-apply kayo as model, nag-apply kayo bilang artista, baka pwede. No? Pero kung hindi, wag nyo na lang lagyan ng inyong picture. Okay? All right. So, meron sample dito na application letter, I mean na resume. I already mentioned that, no? Lagay ninyo yung inyong name. Tapos merong summary statement, may objective, no? Yung skills, uh, whether soft or hard skills, no? Pag sinasabi mo hard skills, yan yung skills na kailangan ng performance ng kamay, no? Uh, kailangan mo ba mag operate ng isang equipment, ng isang machine, that's hard skills. No? Pag sinasabi mo soft skills, it's all about your attitude, it's all about your attributes. No? Okay? And then your education, experience, no? uh, affiliation sa school, kung ano ang mga organization mo, anong mga participation mo sa school activities, importante yan. No? Kasi alam nyo, uh, senior high, pag nasa work na kayo, pag nasa application na kayo, importante ngayon kung sino ngayon sa inyo ang may pinakamaraming pwedeng masabi sa inyong qualification. Now ngayon, if you're during your study, during your stay in the school, wala kayo masyado exposure, wala kayo masyado participation, wala kang maipakitang proof na meron kang mga participation on extracurricular activities. At merong ibang aplikante na magaling, 
meron no meron siya exposure talo ka talaga doon no seminars o oh, hindi ka nag-attend ng mga seminars no ng mga trainings workshops yung mga ganyan di ba okay and character reference all right so that's a sample resume now uh, the purpose of application letter and resume is for you to proceed to the next stage of the application which is the interview no Uh, ang yan ang purpose. Ngayon, ang purpose naman ng interview is para pumili ngayon kung sino ang best candidate, best applicant for the position. All right? Okay. So, uh, it says here, how are you going to prepare? How are you going to ace in the job interview? It says here that preparation is half the battle. Kung familiar kayo sa book ni Sancho, Art of War, ang title ng book ay Art of War, It's all about war strategy. It says there in the book that one way of winning the war is you prepare. You know? Prepare is winning half the battle. Okay? So, anong sinasabi na prepare? Of course, paghandaan mo. Ano ba ang purpose ng job interview? Ang purpose ng job interview is number one, to assess, of course, Uh, your qualifications, no? Gusto ko i-validate yung mga sinasabi mo sa resume na totoo yun, di ba? Number two, gusto ko makita kung meron ka bang grasp, meron ka bang confidence, no? Confident ka ba? Alright? Okay. So it says here that how candidates behave during the interview is often seen as an indicator of how they will perform. So bakit ngayon ang interview ang basis kung sino sa lahat ng aplikante ang pwedeng matanggap? Dahil ang sagot doon, kung makikita na ng interviewer ang lahat ng aplikante, it will give an idea kung paano ka mag-perform sa work. No? Okay? Kung makita kita, makita ko ang mukha mo, makita ko paano ka magsagot, makita ko kung confident ka o hindi ka confident. Kaya importante during job interview, confident ka talaga. No? Meron kang level of confidence. Kasi kung wala kang confidence, hindi ka confident, no? hindi ka spontaneous in responding to questions, it means that you are not also confident in performing the job. Kasi hindi mo alam siguro paano gawin yun. Diba? At bakit kita iha-hire na hindi ka naman pala confident? Okay? So that's the most important thing, no? Pareho good 'yan sa inyo high ng manonood kayo ng mga Miss World, Miss Universe competition, 'di ba? The interview is the final deciding factor. You will know who will wear the crown, who will win the crown based on the interview. That's the final screening process. And how the judges select the winner. Not only the way that the contestant answers the question, but you see the level of confidence being exuded by the contestant. So who among the finalists, for example, top five, top three, yung mga ganun, no? Sino sa kanila ngayon ang pinaka-confident will win the crown? So pareho din yan siya sa job application. So dapat confident ka, hindi ka mag-stammer, hindi putol-putol ang pagsagot mo, okay ka magsagot, alright? Para para ka masabi na confident ka. The more you know about the purpose of the interview and the organization, the better your response to the questions. Now, senior high students, the purpose of you applying for a job is that you want to have an engagement. You want to work with. You want to establish relationship with the company, the organization, no? the office, the agency. Pareho din yan ng isang romantic relationship. No? Kung papasok ka sa isang romantic relationship, alamin mo ngayon kung sino ang tao na yan, di ba? bago ka mag-engage, bago ka ano man, makipag-relasyon sa isang tao. Tama, di ba? Agree kayo doon. No? So pareho din yan sa isang trabaho. So alamin nyo muna kung anong klaseng organization yon, anong klaseng trabaho ang required, ang expected para maintindihan ninyo at masagot ninyo ang mga tanong na pwede ibigay during job interview. Alright? Okay. Generally, what employers are looking for during the interview, one is that, can you do the job? You know, generally, it's all about, ako, ako HR, bakit ako mag interview Gusto ko ngayon tingnan, it's not only about your qualifications, but it's all about your whole perspective in the requirement of the position and of the company. 
kung meron kang talent, meron kang ability, meron kang competence na hinahanap ko, kaya mo i-perform yung job na yun, meron ka bang overall perspective? No? Alam mo ba yun paano gawin? No? Hindi lang meron kang talent, pero alam mo ba ang requirement doon? Pareho din yan ng beauty contest. Wapak ka, marunong ka magsagot, pero hindi mo alam ko anong responsibility once you will be crowned in the in that particular beauty contest. Ang dami mo palang pwedeng gawin. Meron ka palang mga community service. Meron ka palang mga ganitong responsibilities and the like. Diba? So hindi mo alam. Okay? So the first one is can you do the job? So it's a test about your abilities, no? your skills, your talents. The second one is that, okay, meron kang talent, meron kang ability, meron ka bang interest? Will you do the job? Do you have the interest, the motivation, and the right values to work? And the third one is that, will you fit in the company and its culture? So it was, it's all about your interpersonal skills, your adaptability, and your positive work attitude. Okay? So these are some of the job interview questions that will be raised during the interview. Basic, number one, no, most likely this will be the first question to be asked. Tell me something about yourself. So when you, when you respond to this question, it's about introducing yourself. And when you introduce yourself, you try to highlight what are your strengths, no? what are your competencies, what gives you edge over the other, what do you possess no? that are important when you will be hired for the position, okay? What are those qualities that you possess that are valuable to the company, no? So you highlight on that, okay? All right. Second question, what do you know about our company? So again, as I said, they want the HR, the interviewer, wants to know if you have an initial background, if you have done research, if you have done reading, if you have Googled our company, you know, if you have researched our company, what are our products, what are our services? If it's a government agency, then what service we are extending to the people, diba? what is the purpose of our existence as an organization? Okay? Importante yun, no? All right. Third, what is your greatest weakness? Ito, bakit ito itatanong? Itatanong ito dahil, number one, gusto alamin ngayon ng interviewer that you have recognition that no one is perfect. No? Wala talaga perfect. So hindi ka pwede magsagot nito. Pag tanungin ka nito senior high students, hindi ka pwede magsagot na, I, I have no weakness because I cannot reach who I am right now if I have weakness. No? Hindi pwede ganon. Dapat meron ka talagang weakness. Now, it's not enough na sasabihin mo kung ano ang weakness mo. Ang importante dito is that how you turn that weakness into something positive or how you overcome that weakness. Hindi lang siya naiwan as weakness sa iyo. Okay? All right. Do you have any question? Uh, ito, senior high, do not leave, do not let the interview ends without you asking any question. Okay? So magtanong talaga kayo. No? Magtanong kayo because job interview is a form of conversation. Okay? All right. What can you contribute most to our organization? Uh, yung mahala, nade amutan? Kay contribute man. Tagpila po kaya ang amutan. <laughs> no, it's not. No, I mean, you know, if you will be hired... How are you going to help the organization? What can you help? No, what can you in your talents? So probably you can highlight your talents, your experience, no, your accomplishments in life, and that you can translate your accomplishment, for example, to the company if the company will select you among the candidates. All right? Okay. Now uh, there's a there's a survey done by PMAP. PMAP is an organization of HR managers in the country. They were asked what are the common interview mistakes made by um, applicants. No? And I'm sharing this to you because I want you to take note of this. When you're in a job interview, avoid doing this because it's a big no-no. No? Like answering cell phone or texting, dressing inappropriately, appearing disinterested, appearing arrogant, unprepared. Chewing gum, no, not providing specific answers, 
Okay? Or not asking good questions. Alright? Okay. So, ayan. Sabi ko na sa inyo. Magtanong talaga kayo. No? Now, social media etiquette. This is my last topic. No? Uh, why is it important for you to observe and filter your posts in the social media? Because HR, they do background investigation. In short, ano din yan sila, no? Uh, tinitingnan din nila no yung inyong mga social media no uh, nung tawag doon anong term doon um uh, ginatingnan nila gina-open nila kasi if they want to know better if they want to know more about you what they can do is that tingnan ko ang kayo nga di ba mag-stalk kayo no kung meron kayong gusto na i-stalk tingnan niyo naman ang social media account ng tao na yan di ba so Pwede din gawin nila yon, kasi social media is a public uh, profile naman. No? So number one is that do not write negative posts because if you are writing negative posts there in your social media, it means to say that simple lang yan, di ba? Kayo nga ayaw nyo makasama yung mga taong negative ang pag-iisip, no? Uh, negative magsalita, di ba? I do not know kung gusto niyo makasama yung mga taong gano'n. No? Pero hindi natin gusto yung mga taong gano'n kasi baka mahawa tayo sa pagiging negative nila. So the same thing, no? Kung yan ang ginagawa mo, ibig sabihin, that reflects about you. That say something about your personality and of who you are. Okay? Second is that ungrammatical posts or use of derogatory language. So, uh, ayan, no? I mean, you have time to edit and think whether what you are going to post there in your social media is proper, no? is professional in nature, correct ba or hindi. No? Uh, isipin mo na lang, kung if you're going to say something bad to other people, to other organization, at ikaw yun, sasabihan ka ng masama ng ibang tao, okay ba yan sa feeling mo? Hindi, di ba? Kaya nga sabi natin, no one is perfect. So, alam natin na may pagkukulang ang tao, then do not say that. no Keep that to yourself. I mean, you know, why why announce that to the world? So, in short, senior high students, hindi lahat dapat ng feelings mo, ng iniisip mo, ilabas mo sa social media. no Third, make your posts all about you. Pareho ng TikTok, di ba? Ang isip ko nung TikTok nun, sayaw-sayaw lang. Kaya makita ko na TikTok, sige sayaw-sayaw, di ba? What does it mean kung ang lahat ng post mo ay about sa iyo, no? Anong suot mo, anong ginagawa mo, anong kinakain mo, o OTD, yung mga ganun. Ikaw yung tao na gusto mo palagi ang limelight na sa iyo. Alright? So, pag nasa iyo, pag iha-hire kita, baka gusto mo lahat ng attention ibigay sa iyo, which is not also good, no? So, since it's a social media, Then you say something about the social issues, di ba? What's going on around, di ba? So like for example, um, if you have read something, if you have read a book, then share what is your take no? in that book, the lesson of that book. No? If you have watched a series, no? a movie, then if you have review, no? if you have interpretation, if you have feeling about that, then you say something about that movie. No? or any issue around okay all right because the social media no? so hindi lang pwede na lahat about sa iyo okay si guess so i think that's all for our topic for my topic about pre-employment requirements so i'll stop sharing and uh, i'll turn over the virtual floor to benji All right. So thank you so much, Sir Ray, for those information with regards to those pre-employment requirements. So uh, may we ask our senior high school students if they have questions regarding our topic. You can chat. You can also raise your hand. And, right, and then we will turn on. Vincent. Your... All right, Vincent. Sir, can I get a Guan Sir certificate? All right. So later on, we're 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 going to give your certificate after our our webinar. So all right. So let's have first uh, asking question with regards to the topic for employment requirements. All right. Meron pa ba? Sir, kwan pa sir sa resume ipasin pa no sa sir. Ayon sir kung kafolder ba daw ipasin nerve daw ang ang resume. 
Well, uh, well, what you can do is that for your application and then your resume and your other documents, pwede nyo naman ilagay yan siya sa isang folder. Yeah, correct. Pwede i-fastener kasi wag butasan. No? Uh, baka kasi may ibang filing style ang company na sabitan mo, na bigyan mo ng inyong mga documents. So, correct. Pwede mo naman siya i-fastener, ilagay mo sa isang uh, folder. No? Or ano ba yan? Envelope ba ang tawag doon? No? Yung parang cellophane no na folder pwede ganon all right yan other questions from our audience meron pa ba sample daw sir nang pwedeng i-question or i-ask ng students during the interview Okay. Anong pwedeng sample na question na itanong niyo during the interview? One is that about follow-up kasi uh, pwede para to show interest no na interested ka talaga sa work, pwede mo tanungin kung when can you make a follow-up on the status of your application? Like can you like make call after 10 days, 15 days? Kasi hindi ka din naman pwede i-hostage na lang no in like you know uh, pahintayin ng matagal na walang feedback. So importante sa iyo ang feedback. Privilege mo yan na tanungin sa kanila no. So like uh ma'am my question is that or sir my question is that um when can I make a follow up? Can I make a follow up after 10 days from the interview and I'd like to know the status so that I can ask the status of my application that's number 1 no. Number 2 is that um if you hire new staff in your company. Uh, do you allow them to participate in an orientation program? No, are you giving them orientation program so that they will know also the rules and policies no, of your organization? So things like that. Questions like that will give them an idea that you are really interested for the position and uh, be part of the company. All right. Uh, what about salary? Well, it's your privilege to know about how much you are going to receive if you will be hired for the job, but do not ask that question during the interview no? because it's off. Uh, Nakaka-discourage yung ganun. You ask that question outside the interview. Okay? All right. All right. Other questions from our audience? All right, sir. I think we'll end questions. Okay, thank you very high. much. Good luck thank to you so our much. senior high school students and my advanced congratulations to your graduation for senior high. All right. All right. So again, so that those are you know, the details with regards to pre-employment requirements. All right. So let's go on you know, with our uh, program. So since we discussed pre-employment requirements and hopefully you, know, you really um, grasp all those information, all right, so this time let's have our parang quiz. All right, let's have our, our online quiz for pre employment requirements. And don't you worry, guys, you'll be given a prize. So, is that okay? Okay, kayo. All right, so we request everyone to please go to menti.com. That's www.menti.com. And then use the code 8216-1856. And then you write your full name. And once you will be the winner in this menti or in this quiz, you'll be given a 100 peso load oh, yan, via GCash. All right? Sige. So, okay po ng 100 pesos no, for inyo ha po ng internet. All right? So, sige. Go. Please join. And for those um, students that are watching sa YouTube, they're watching via YouTube, so please join now. Again, www.menti.com and then use the code 8216-1856. All right. Sige. Okay, we need some more players. We are 50 plus here sa ating Zoom and there are also watching via YouTube. All right, so get go. We're still waiting for others. Ali, Ali, Abtik, Mon. 100 peso load no, sa mananalo no, sa ating menti. Again, we would like to welcome no, our students from different schools, public and private. So a while ago, or not, I was not able to 
uh, recognized Hagonoy National High School. Ayan. So welcome sa ating webinar. Dali, dali, abtik. Okay. All right, so I think we're good, no? Let's start. No, our ano, our quiz. Others, no, can still join and abtik abtik. All right. Sige. Let's start. Answer fast to get more points. Eyes on your phone and here's the question, how long the ideal resume should be? Is it one to two pages, four to five pages, or it depends on the job you're applying? Nine seconds to answer. And six, five, four, three, two, and one. Time's up. All right, let's see. So most of you says it's one to two pages, and that's correct. All right. Sige, let's go. Tingnan natin kung sino yung nasa leaderboard. All right, so para ma-encourage kayo. All right, it's Mary Cecil, no, yung top one natin, and then Audrey, and then Alia. All right, so again, let's have another question. Second question, answer fast to get more points. And here's the question. The objective of the resume is for the applicant to get hired. True or false? All right, so again, true or false? Walang trolls. All right. Five, four, three, two, and one. Time's up. Saan pa mas madaming answer? Most of you says it's true, but sorry, it's false. The objective of the resume is for the applicant to get an interview. Ayun. Kaya galingan natin sa resume at saka sa application letter para ma-interview tayo. Alright. Sige, let's see kung si Mary Cecil pa din sa top one. Merong other students no, na mas magandang internet niya, <laughs> right? And very fast talaga na naka-answer. Still, Mary Cecil is our fastest, all right? Then second si Audrey, third Riza. So you go, Riza. Kaya yan. All right, let's have the third question. Answer fast to get more points. In the hiring process, the best applicant gets the job. True or false? Ayan. 10 seconds to answer. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and time's up. All right. The correct answer is false. The hiring process, the best interview gets the job. Now, four, five of you got the correct answer. Let's see if it is still Mary Cecil on the top. The cur the, I mean, <laughs> top one pa din si Mary Cecil. Oy, fastest si Mary Cecil. Second si Audrey. And then third, Visa. Okay, we have second to the last question. Answer fast to get more points. Which of the following should not be in a resume? Look at your phone. Contact number, education, height, and religion. All right, seven. Five seconds to answer. Four, three, two, one, and time's up. All right. Okay. So, height and religion to avoid discrimination. Okay. Let's see kung si Mary Cecil pa rin. All right. Okay. So, in this round, it's still Mary Cecil. All right. Okay. So, again, last question. Answer fast to get more points. Here's the question. During the interview, an applicant should not ask any question to the interviewer. Is this true or false? 10 seconds to answer. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and time's up. Most of you says it's false and you are correct. So do not leave no, the interview room without asking questions. So sir mentioned a while ago, no, kung ano yung mga appropriate questions no, uh, during the interview or hindi, yun ding uh, inappropriate mga questions. So let's see if it's Mary Cecil, ang winner natin and will get a 100 peso load. Here we go. All right. Okay, so I think we have now the winner and it's Mary Cecil. Congratulations, Mary Cecil. 
we got a 100 peso load from UM. Okay, please chat your number so that I can process no, your load. All right. Okay, so congratulations. Don't worry, guys. We still have um, another set no, of um, questions later. Okay, that's why you have to listen to our speakers this afternoon. Again, we are still um, live via YouTube. No, we are streaming live sa YouTube natin. This is the Senior High School Immersion Webinar. All right, so this is the episode five of our immersion webinar. We will be talking arts and sciences. So a while ago, we've, we've talked about pre-employment requirements. So this time, it's now for arts and sciences immersion topics. Okay, so for us to be guided of the various arts and sciences programs, this afternoon, we have, we've invited no, mga excellent professors uh, under the College of Arts and Sciences Education. Uh, specifically in the language discipline. So together with us this afternoon are Professor Mark Jason Quario and also Professor Kenneth Sumatra. All right, so please um, um, listen no, to their discussion this afternoon because um, later on we're we'll be having another set no, of questions for our mentee. .com. All right, so without further ado, let us welcome a virtual round of applause to our speakers this afternoon, Professor Mark Jason Quario and Professor Kenneth Sumatra. Sir? Thank you so much, um, Sir Benji. Uh, let me first go ahead and share my screen. Great. Okay. All right, so like what Professor Minopas mentioned, um, I will be discussing more about College of Arts and Sciences. But before I go ahead and discuss um, what's all about College of Arts and Sciences, let me first ask you guys, have you already decided what course are you planning to proceed or take? Um, probably most of you are still undecided and that's perfectly fine because, uh, you know, you don't have to rush this kind of decision because it takes really a lot of time to consider what are your options are. So um, I've been teaching here in the university for almost eight years now. And one thing that I've noticed is that when students are pretty much undecided with their courses, they end up like jumping from one one program to another, and it's really not healthy at all, like financially wise. So before you enroll in University of Mindanao, I want you to consider all the factors that you are looking into a particular program. Do, don't just uh, focus on the practicality of the degree, but also look into the consideration of your heart's desire, because that's a very important factor that you have to consider, because if your heart is not really in in it like in your program or like it feels like you're being forced to take such program it would really going to be a bit of a struggle so um give yourself time to to you know to to really think of where do you see yourself um after graduating in college so no rush at all. Uh, I believe these are students coming from or taking UMS and GAS. One thing that people actually think is that when they take UMS and GAS, they are limited to certain degrees or programs. But when they proceed to college, but that's actually not you know not the case at all times. You can actually proceed and take programs that are not you know, perfectly aligned with your strands. And that's what we are here for, to show to you programs that um, College of Arts and Sciences offer. All right, let's start. Um, my discussion will, I'll, will be about college objectives, College of Arts and Sciences programs, on the job training process, and case- well, so Professor Mark. Yes. Your slide is not in- uh... Presentation okay. manner. <laughs> All right, I'm so sorry. Okay. 
Position na kaano. Sa baba pa, sir. Okay. Uh, go na lang sa slideshow, sir. Slideshow. It's a... Uh, huh. There. How about this one? Yes, sir. Okay. Now. okay right. now. Thank you. All right. So where was I? So the discussion will be revolving around college objectives, college of arts and sciences programs, on the job training process, and the partnered schools um, for your practicum and the industries and organizations as well. So let's start first with the objectives of college of arts and sciences. So the number one objective is that to enable students from various disciplines to keep a sense of global perspectives in the appreciation of arts and culture. Okay, to give you a bit of a context on this particular objective, uh, here in the Philippines, we do have little to no regard to degrees related to arts. We always think of like um, white collar jobs, like accountancy, being a lawyer, being a doctor, being a nurse, but only a very little regard to those degrees that are related with social sciences and communicative um, communicative degrees. It, it is because, I think it's also because of how society had painted um, the picture of this particular, the, the painted a picture of how success looks like. Like it always talks about, you know, uh, the digits in your ATM or like what the money in your bank account. But, you know, here in College of Arts and Sciences, we do offer um, degrees that are related to arts and that would be cultivating culture in particular, because it's not all the time that's going to be about practicality. Yeah, it may give food on the table when you have the job, but are you happy with what you are doing? Right. So that's the very first objective in, college, in case where and we allow students to see um, disciplines like social sciences, particularly to have a global perspective that there is um, there is a future in the field of arts and, um, and there's a future in arts and culture. Number two is to instill to students genuine love and patriotism for the country. So this objective um, allows us to appreciate uh, working in, in the Philippines. Although there are still like, uh, I don't want to say problems, more like issues when it comes to employment here in the country. That is why most graduates would rather go out, you know, um, fly abroad to look for the greener pasture or to like, you know, earn dollars and all that. And very, and I, I really believe that Filipino graduates are very skilled, um, skilled graduates. And it's just sad that they'd be work. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong about like wanting to work abroad. It's just that in when in College of Arts and Sciences, we also um, allow students to see and appreciate the beauty of like serving your own country, you know, being patriotic to your own country and working in your own country. Because there are so many industries and organizations that are needing skillful um, Filipino graduates, especially in your generation, wherein it's like filled with um, technology-based learning. Number three, to promote universal moral values and ethical principles among students. So in College of Arts and Sciences, we don't just uh, shape you intellectually, but we'd also want to have you in a like, in, you know, your entire being that says become an intellectual giant, but, you know, very low EQ. So in, it has to be a balance of like promoting IQ and at the same time EQ. So that's promoting, you know, uh, morality and ethics, because these are like very important foundation when you would leave the, the, the four corners of the university, because you may be very good at your job, but what if you're not doing it with honesty and integrity? So it's still not good. 
Number four, to provide courses that enable students to develop skills and critical thinking, lead an organization competently, and manage themselves well. So in University of Mindanao, especially in College of Arts and Sciences, uh, we do have courses. Courses are actually like subjects. Um, the course that we know are actually what we call the programs. So we do have courses or subjects that we offer wherein it would help you develop critical thinking, especially I as um, a language teacher. We have courses wherein it would test and assess your critical thinking and especially reading comprehension because it's like as you have noticed in in the you know in social in the, in the climate that we see in the social media there are so many misinformation like fake news so reading comprehension is a very important thing that we have to develop and um, as teachers in college of arts and sciences we do want to promote um, not just readers who are like sponges who just absorbs information without questioning the information so there is a need for us to develop critical thinking in order for us to be analytical as well and number five to provide knowledge in art studies that is technology based in order to produce graduates who are capable of promoting and cultivating various arts of the industry and society so gone are the days where in learning is very traditional um here in University of Mindanao, we do have like so many laboratories, which will be discussed later on by Professor Sumatra. Uh, we do have like e-learning um, facilities. And at the moment, we are actually, since the pandemic started, we are actually using Blackboard Learning Management System. It's like an online classroom that we use. So it, it somehow aided the learning process despite the fact that there's no face-to-face -face interaction between the teacher and the students and aside from that um not to brag or anything but uh the university of Mindanao like has one of the biggest library and one of the biggest libraries in the among all the universities here in Davao city so that being said uh learning resources will not be really scars when it comes to researching and um, discovering. Number six, to produce graduates with communication skills worthy of appreciation in social, interpersonal, corporate, and community relation. Now, here's the thing. Um, it is quite a sad reality here in the Philippine context where in English language has been considered to be like the measurement of intelligence, which is totally not, and I totally disagree. But we live in a society wherein people always test and have and all already have that bias or prejudice when it comes to like in, in the interview process and then like, oh how done you English not and all that. Um we have yes to develop such communicative skill in order for us to you know to pass the interview and to to grow as a uh, personally and professionally in the corporate world or in the academe however we need to also match such communicative skills with the knowledge on how to do the job um like uh the, the morality and ethical stipulation that comes with a job. It's not just about communicative skill. It also has to be um, the entirety of you as a person. So here in the here in um, University of Mindanao, a special college of person sciences, um, the English courses that we offer would totally help you achieve that communicative skill that is needed in the industry today. Number seven, to generate competitive entrepreneurs for the arts and entertainment industry at national and international levels. So here in UM, we our, our students are actually like, especially in College of Arts and Sciences, we have students that have been sent abroad to be exchange students and to have um, experience, you know, being in other culture and other nationalities. So they'd be able to expand their knowledge as well and in relation, of course, to the program that they are taking. And we also have exchange students from, you know, from other country, you would be joining your classes here in the campus itself. So it's like having yourself immersed in such diversity. 
Number eight, to provide consult um, consultative expertise in the fields of creative applied technology. As I was saying, um, here in UM, gone, gone are the days of the traditional way of learning, but we have already been using blended learning with the use of technology to aid the process of um, teaching and learning at the same time. So those are the objectives of um, College of Arts and Sciences. And here are uh, the programs that we offer. So if you are interested in studying under our college, you can pick any of these programs. Okay, so we have Bachelor of Arts in Communication. So if you want to proceed to like, uh, sorry, all right. Okay, so where was I? So if you are someone who are into public speaking or very confident speaking in front of people, Bachelor of Arts in Communication would be, perf would be the perfect fit for you. Bachelor of Arts in English Language, this is more on the study of um, the English language itself, or like the structure of the language, semantics, syntax. If you're into that, then it's actually a very good course because it, it's not just focused on grammar, but it's also focused on linguistics. And linguistics can be very broad. It can be related to psycholinguistics, social linguistics, and so many more. So if you are someone who are interested in studying language, this would be a perfect fit for you. Or like if you're learning um, other languages like Korean, if you're into Kore Korean drama or Spanish, or if you're just someone who likes to learn about languages, like people who are what we call like polyglot, um, Bachelor of Arts in English Language would be the right fit. If you would want to proceed to like law school um, after your four-year course, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science would be the right fit. Although, it, yeah, it's, it's a good stepping stone for um, law school, but there are also other um, paths that you can um, proceed if, even if you're not gonna, if you're not planning to be a lawyer. Paul Sci students can land different jobs. It's a very um, profound profession. Bachelor of Arts in Journalism. Now, if you are in, if you are part of your, uh, like news, on uh, what do you call that? Like the the news organization in your school, the publication, and it somehow awakened your the the journalistic spirit in you. Then proceed with AB Journalism. We also have AB in Broadcasting. Like if you wanna, if you have always dreamed to be a news anchor our newscaster, this would be the right program. Also, we have Bachelor of Science in Agroforestry. This would be very fitting for those people who loves Mother Nature, who loves to who appreciate, you know, um, nature. Bachelor of Science in Biology major in Ecology. And we also have Bachelor of Science in Biology major in Plant Biology. Now, these are uh, our, our teachers, the, the faculty members of these uh, who offers the program are biologists by profession. So you would really be in good hands. We also have Bachelor of Science in Environmental, Sci Environmental Science and also Bachelor of Science in Forestry. The difference with agroforestry, it's more on the agricultural, um, agricultural sector, while Bachelor of Science in Forestry is more of a general term. The agroforestry is quite specific. And if you are fond of numbers and calculations, then proceed with Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. Um, for me, and this is totally not my cup of tea because I am really, really not good with numbers. But if you are that person, then you can be, you know, you can proceed with mathematics. And if you love the human psych, uh, proceed with Bachelor of Science in Psychology. This is a very promising program, especially if you have taken UMS. Um, this would be the right fit because it deals with um, the human side in general. Also, we have Bachelor of Science in Social Work, wherein we have lots of top notchers um, and under these program. And if you love to go and do outreach programs, if you have the spirit for volunteerism or altruism, 
um, being a social worker is actually a very fulfilling profession. It's a very fulfilling vocation. So these are the programs that we have. So again, if you are GAS, HUME, or STEM, or TechVoc, it doesn't matter because you can take any of these courses, um, any of these courses, despite that it's not like perfectly aligned to the strands that you are taking in your, um, in your senior high school. So nothing to worry about that. But then forward, uh, when you, when you are already on your fourth year, this is like the process of the on-the-job training. This is for your practicum. So first would be, of course, uh, going to start with um, soliciting for the for the right industry, the right organization, which I will be discussing later uh, on the next slide. Um, we'll be looking for the, because we have so many connections uh, university of Mindanao is connected with so and affiliated with so many other sectors uh may it be government or non-government organization so we would find the best uh industry that would totally hone your skills and prepare you before leaving the four corners of the university then next step would be the verification this would be uh, between your practicum supervisor, or and they would try to look and see if all the requirements, both from you and the partnered industry, have been met. And then there's the pre deployment. Uh, this would have like um, a seminar wherein you'd be, uh, you'd be informed of the do's and don'ts once you have been. Um, you have been like sent out to your respective uh, fields. Um, and this one, in during the pandemic, the practicum, the OJT of University of Midland students were online, but they were still able to practice the, the skills required and necessary for their profession. Next would be the checking. Uh, this is, would be the, again, uh, just rechecking of the requirements and all the documents needed, and then you would be deployed. And then once deployed, you will have your internship proper. Um, there would be several uh, like required number of hours that you would have. And this, uh, this particular internship, you can actually use this to be, uh, to be put under your resume as part of your work experience because it would totally help you uh, land that job because you can you know use it as an edge during your uh, for you to get the interview because the uh, the prospective employer would be like oh, okay this person already knows a little about this particular because he he had interned in this particular firm or in this particular company so they so it's no longer going to be like totally new to you. And then once you are done with the required number of hours, then it would be the validation. The validation would be you complying all the requirements, the portfolio towards the end of the um, internship or the OG. And um, these are, by the way, the partnered uh, the partnered industries that we have and companies and firms as well. Under psychology, we have New Day Recovery Center, Dr. Arison Bibetican Psychology Center, Little Haven Psychological Services, Davao Christian High School, Concentrix, RDL Pharmaceutical Laboratory, Davao Autism Intervention Center Foundation, Mesano Mall of Davao. If you have noticed, this is psychology field, uh, but there are like um, Davao Christian, Gaisano Mall, because uh, the, the program of psychology does not just focus on like, you know, psychology itself. It can also be guidance counseling. It can also be human resource and all that. It's a very broad um, field of expertise. Next would be for mass communication, uh, AB communication, AB journalism, and AB broadcasting. Um, we have Philippine Information Agency, Region 11, Mindanao Times, the, the XUM, Radio Ukai Davao, City Information Office, People's Television, or PTC Davao, PTCV Davao, TV5 Davao, DXDC AM Radio, Mindanao Network, DXSL, IFM Davao, um, Forum, OFD. So if you would be enrolling in any of these programs, you're not going to have a difficulty looking for 
your partner schools or you know partner industry because other universities other schools actually the students would have to be the one um looking for kung asa sila mag OJT and it's you know it's very hassle and struggle um, for political science, we have National Labor Labor Relations, Communication, City Health Office, Commission on Human Rights, Department of Interior and Local Government, or DILG, and Barangay Councils as well. So you would really practice, you know, all these political stuff. Next would be biological science. We are partnered with um, Department of Science and Technology, Water District, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, Dairy Best, um, Mount Kamigitan, Pantispina Orchid, Garden and Tropical Plants Incorporated, and Sagrax Corporation. For um, the field of communicative um, programs, we have Davao Language Academy, Sunster Davao, EOE Global Services Corporation, and FGC Plus. For social work, there's a lot of um, partnered organization. We have Department of Social Welfare and Development, uh, City Social Welfare and Development Office, Marfil, San Lorenzo Ruiz, Social Economic Development Foundation, DOJ, SPH, or San Pedro Hospital, Mindanao Migrants for Actions Incorporated, Tambayan Center for Children's Rights, Padre P. Home for Children, SOS Children's Davao, Overseas Workers Welfare and Administration Region 11, Department of Health Region 11, Kaug Mountain Foundation Incorporated, Care for the Elderly Foundation Incorporated, Devil Jubilee Foundation Incorporated, uh, Golden Homes and other LGUs as well. So um, if you would be enrolling under social work, you'd be very busy, but it's a very fulfilling um, experience because you get to really interact with people on, you know, under root level. So that um, actually ends my discussion about the programs offered and the, the objectives of College of Arts and Sciences and also the partnered um, the partner industries and organizations. If you have any questions, oh, I'm gonna give the virtual floor back to um, Professor Reynolds, Sir Benj. All right, thank you so much, Sir Mark. And later on, I believe no, our students no, would um, also give their questions. And I think we can proceed now with uh, the next speaker. Uh, and still no, on giving you guides no, on your career to various arts and sciences programs. Uh, sir, Sir Kenneth, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone, especially to our senior high school students. Um, allow me to share my screen. All right. Okay. Is my screen visible now, Sir Penge? Yes, but sir. Okay. Once again, good afternoon, uh, everyone, especially to our senior high school students. Now, Sir Mark uh, was able to share to you in detail the pro programs offered by our college, and I hope that our dear senior high school students are also considering enrolling in our college. Now, uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> uh, yes. The PowerPoint is not in the presentation view. Oh, sorry. Hang on, sir. Um. One moment, sir. Okay. How about this, sir? It's my uh, slide. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. As I'm saying, no, uh, I will be sharing my uh, topic today on the possible career paths and employ uh, employability skills in the arts and sciences. Okay. Now, uh, I'll be sharing to you in detail some of the possible career paths after you complete your degree program because I know that some of you are still confused. You still doubt where you will go after completing the four-year program or course that you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually four-year degree programs uh, in the College of Arts and Science Education are uh, very interesting at some point. And I, I hope you, you will be considering enrolling in our college. Usually, most graduates uh, would really ask themselves, where will I go or what career would I have or what is the possible opportunity available for me? Now, I'll be sharing to you some of the career paths you can go after graduation. By the way, these, 
this is my discussion flow. I'll talk about the career, career paths in the arts and sciences program and employability skills. Now, let's start with the Bachelor of Arts in uh, Journalism and then followed by Broadcasting and Communication. By the way, uh, before it was mass communication, mm -hmm. but now it is divided into three areas of specialization. Just like what I mentioned, we have the journalism, broadcasting, and communication. You can choose you know, which area you are good at or your forte. Mm -hmm. You can choose from those specializations. Now, what are, what are the career opportunities of Bachelor of Arts in Journalism? You can be a news editor. You can be a media researcher, news analyst, writer broadcast journalist, you can be a photojournalist, a program director, or public relations officer. So these are some of the career opportunities that you can have after graduating a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism. Okay, what about Bachelor of Science in Broadcasting? You can be a radio or television writer, you can be a radio or television director, radio or television producer, news reporter or news anchor or media manager or media consultant or even a college professor after you graduate. You can take uh, education units and you can teach in college. Okay, and what are the career opportunities for the Bachelor of Arts in Communication? You can be a copywriter, account executive, advi advertising manager, a public relations officer, TV or radio production staff, or also a college professor. So these are the three programs from the before the mass communication, but the three specialization, specializations now in the program are journalism, broadcasting, and communication. You can consider these courses in college. As I said, it depends on your forte or what uh, specializations you would want to pursue in college. And of course, we have the Bachelor of Arts in English Language, which is also the a uh, course that I took in college. Okay, so what are the career opportunities? But before I move on to the career opportunity, career opportunities, no, let me just clarify the differences between Bachelor of Arts in English language and uh, the uh, Bachelor of uh, Science in Education major in English. So they are two different courses. Guys, if you want to teach Eng English and learn the pedagogy, of how to teach English to the second language learner, then you can pursue with the BS in English. And that's under the College of Teacher Education. But if you want to learn the meat and the heart of English language, you may consider AB English language. So what would be the possible career opportunities, opportunities after you graduate? No, uh, Bachelor of Arts in English Language, you can be a digital copywriter, editorial assistant, or you can be an English as foreign language teacher, lexicographer, magazine journalist, newspaper journalist, private tutor, publishing copy editor or proofreader. You can be a secondary school teacher or web content manager or a writer. So these are the career opportunities. And what about the Bachelor of Arts in Political Science? You can be a policy analyst, legislative assistant, public relations specialist, social media manager, marketing research analyst, political consultant, or you can be an attorney. You can proceed a law after you graduate political science, mm -hmm. an intelligence analyst, political campaign staff, college student leadership and activities directors, paralegal, public opinion researcher, or a corporate advisor for government relations, political consultant, or a professor as well. So these are the career opportunities in the future after you graduate, no? And what about the Bachelor of Science in Biology major in Ecology? We have two, just like Sir Mark mentioned. We have major in Plant Biology, okay? But for the Bachelor of Science in Biology major in Ecology, your career paths can be a field ecologist, restoration ecologist. You can be a park naturalist or a nature conver conservation officer or environmental consultant or environmental protection specialist. Or you can be a nature resource manager or a teacher as well in college. And what are the uh, career opportunities mm, in taking Bachelor of Science in Biology major in plant biology? You can be a plant biotechnologist, a plant scientist, or process developer, developer and a product developer as well, or quality control officer, 
or you can be a regulatory issues advisor, research scientist, support scientist, or a teacher as well. So these are some of the career opportunities. Now, moving on to the Bachelor of Science in Forestry, we have also two uh, majors, no? Forestry and Agroforestry, or courses. So let's start with the forestry. These are your career opportunities in the future. Uh, you can be a farm supervisor, farm manager, plant, plant manager, dairy herdsman, or processing plant manager, or entomologist in the future, or horticulturist, or pest control supervisor. Okay, and for agroforestry, you can be a college instructor if you want to, just like what I mentioned earlier, you can just take education units if you wanted to teach, um, and then academic researcher or technical consultant, entrepreneur, farm supervisor, agriculture officer, or rural development officer. So these are some of the career opportunities. Okay, and for environmental science, okay, these are your career opportunities. You can be an environmental scientist, environmental lawyer, environmental engineer, environmental consultant, or conservation scientists, or nature, nature conservation officer, or mineral surveyor, or a teacher too. Okay. Now, uh, if you're good at math, just like Sir Mark mentioned earlier, and if after graduating, no, a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, okay, uh, you can be a math teacher or college professor, or financial analyst, or a system developer, algorithm developer, marketing analyst, mathematician, or cryptographer. So these are some of the career opportunities for this uh, course after you graduate. And what about Bachelor of Science in Psychology? Okay, you can be an advertising agent or agents, career counselor, case manager, child care worker, laboratory assistant, market researcher, psychiatric technician, probation and parole officer, rehabilitation specialist, and a teacher, or if you want to, in the future. Okay, and what about Bachelor of Science in Social Work? You can be a human resource developer, a program manager, or a social worker, and a social welfare planner and a counselor. So these are some of those. And by the way, before I move on to the employability skills, no? Uh, our Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, uh, along with Bachelor of Science in Forestry, Agroforestry, and Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and Bachelor of Science in Social Work, these are actually board courses. So after you graduate, uh, you will take a licensure exam. Mm -hmm. So after graduation, you can take uh, the licensure exam. So these are the career opportunities that you can have after taking the course or the uh, pro degree programs, the four-year degree programs in the College of Arts and Sciences. Actually, there are 13 programs no, that we offer and the career opportunities that you can actually pursue. Now, in your stay with our college, which is most likely four years, just like what I mentioned, because our programs are four-year courses, what skills will be honed in your four-year stay in our program? Okay. Now, before you are deployed to the actual battlefield, to the world of the professionals, you will be trained and your skills will be honed. Rest assured, University of Mindanao would never allow you to combat the battle unless you are fully equipped and you are fu fully ready to face uh, that battle in the professional world because in the journey, you know, or the journey does not end after you just graduate or finish the course. That is just the beginning. As Sir Mark mentioned earlier, UM provides you with the best learning experience and facilities. And we have a lot of partners that would help us prepare you for the actual battlefield. Okay, now these are the employability skills uh, in Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Uh, okay, now uh, research and anal analysis of information, writing for clarity and explanation, interpersonal communications, visual design, public speaking, media relations, leadership, conflict resolution, presentation speaking. So these are some of the employability skills under this degree. And for Bachelor of Arts in English Language, planning and researching, research, read and work, articulating knowledge and understanding of text and concepts, and theories as well, leading and participating in discussions, negotiation and team working to present ideas, effectively conveying arguments and opinions, okay, 
and using your judgments to weigh up alternative uh, alternative perspectives, critical reasoning, and analysis. So these are some of those uh, employability skills. And for Bachelor of Arts in Journalism, uh, the employed employability skills are the following, critical analysis, resourcefulness, self-management, interpersonal skills, leadership, flexible and creative an independent approach to task, the, the capacity to communicate information and effective, effectively and clearly, and the ability to listen and work productively in a team. So these are some of the employability skills under this course. And for the Bachelor of Arts in Broadcasting, so these are your skills, no? Uh, critical analysis, research, commercial and cultural awareness of the media and creative industries, teamwork, very important and that's one of the core values of um no teamwork initiation and development of creative work in writing audiovisual or other electronic media a flexible and creative and independent approach to tasks the ability to work to a brief and meet uh, to a brief uh, to a brief and meet deadline so these are some of those employability skills now moving on to the bachelor of arts in political science okay so your employability skills are the following, making projections, organizing people or ideas, thinking logically, conceptualizing and implementing projects and decision making. Okay, decision making is also important in other degrees, no programs. So you can use, uh, th uh, these are some of the employability skills. And for the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, deciding on the best uh, data collection methods, conducting field surveys and collecting data or data, conducting lab tests on water, air, and soil samples, interpreting data to identify whether contamination exists in accordance with environmental laws, building conceptual models that identify the potential contaminant sources that could have been an adverse impact on the environment, preparing detailed scientific reports or preparations based on their fi findings and communication, their, communicating the results or communication of the results to their studies to senior scientists and key c stakeholders. So these are some of the most important employability skills now that you, you will be honed with. And uh, Bachelor of Science in Agroforestry, no? the following are employability skills, carrying out the science, art, and business of a dynamic and interactive process of production, management, and utilization of trees and other uh, woody perennials, agricultural crop, crops and, and or animals and soils and related environment in the same unit of land arranged either zonally, Make simultaneously or sequentially for the twin purpose of, take note, conservation and socioeconomic productivity. So these are some uh, of the employability skills. And for Bachelor of Science in Forestry, okay, the following are your employability skills, soil health, plant health, monitoring and assessment, learning specialized software, resource management, instruction, insects, diseases, and more negotiation, complex problem solving, and cost benefit analysis. So these are some of the employability skills. And for a Bachelor of Science in Biology major in Ecology, an analytic, you need an analytical mind and critical thinking skills, enjoy working with living organisms and studying biological systems. Good laboratory skills is also vital. Okay, and an ability to quickly assess large amounts of information and data. Okay, and for Bachelor of Science in Biology, major in Plant Biology. Okay, these are the following employability skills. Enjoy working with living organisms and studying biological systems. Okay, and develop understanding for from various scientific literature sources. Leadership is also important. Self-confidence and motivation good decision-making skills, okay. And for Bachelor of Science in Social Work, so these are your employability skills, detailed note-taking ability, organizational skills, understanding the human psychology, knowledge of human development stages, knowledge of interventions applicable to one's specialty, a developed sense of empathy. You, see, you will be dealing with a lot of uh, people here in the society and verbal and written communication skills as well okay and for bachelor of science in psychology these are your employability skills critical analysis resourcefulness self-management interpersonal skills 
leadership, a flexible and creative and independent approach to tasks, the capacity to communicate information effectively and clearly. Yeah, this is important because you need to deal with a lot of clients as well, people in general. The ability to listen and work productively in a team. So you need to be a team player too. So these are some of those employability skills. And lastly is our Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. So you need to uh, be good in constructing and presenting mathematical and logical arguments and uh, the ability to deal with highly abstract concepts. So those people who are really good at math and abstract concepts no, really need this. Advanced numeracy skills, turning real-world problems into mathematical problems, being able to exactly state what a problem is, including assumptions uh, made, if necessary, breaking it down into sub-problems and presenting the solution clearly. And also you need... Uh, to, to be good in analyzing data, finding patterns, and extracting conclusions. And also, strong ID skills is necessary, including MAP, for example, MAPL, MATLAB, and Excel. Okay, now, these are those employability, employability skills that uh, you will be honed no, and you will be prepared with in the future. And is important for the important employability skills uh, that are helpful after you graduate mm, in the future. Okay, now, uh, those are all uh, the career paths and employability skills that you can uh, have, no? Mm, and uh, I'm going to ask you this question before uh, I stop my presentation. No, Why do you need to pursue a career in arts and sciences? I just wanted to reiterate this, know that after your journey with us, you can really say that I am from UM and I am ready to face the professional battle. So I hope our senior high school students are really considering to enroll in the College of Arts and Sciences Education because um, I can't wait to see you here. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for listening, guys. And once again, good afternoon. Thank you, Sir Benji. All right. So thank you so much, um, Professor Kenneth, no, for those um, inputs with regards to the employability skills and also to those careers no, na pwedeng tahaki ng ating mga senior high school no, once they pursue arts and sciences no, na mga, uh, na mga programs. And hopefully no, that um, those discussion no, will help you um, have no, the bird's eye view of what path no, would you like to take. And of course, having those um, programs no, uh, mentioned no, by Professor Ken and Professor Mark, no, you'll decide no, ano yung career path ninyo. And so this time, we would like to ask our um, students, no, you can have your Q&A with our two um, guest speakers no, on arts and sciences. Do you have clarifications or Pieces of advice. <laughs> now, these two are good you know, in advising you guys because they have a lot of experience now. And also with regards to their career, they're already uh, very successful. And right now, you no, know, currently they're having their doctor's degree. You no, know? so they really uh, they they really have their career you no know, um, booming. So they can really give you advices on that, right? Questions from our audience? Meron ba? Ayan, is multimedia part of the program of College of Arts and Sciences? I think um, Professor um, Mark yeah. can answer this. All right, thank you so much, uh, Sir Benji. Well, originally before, uh, multimedia arts was actually part and under College of Arts and Sciences. It was just very recently that it was uh, moved under College of Computing Education. Uh, college of Computing Education is actually the college that handles programs related to IT, um, IT related courses. And since um, there are more um, like field of like experts, uh, experts in the field under College of Computing Education, we do not want to, uh, you know, to inhibit our students to really achieve their full potential. So this certain program was transferred under College of Computing Education in order for them to truly hone the skills of being in the field of uh, multimedia arts. So it's no longer under CASE, but it's already under CCE. 
But don't worry, guys. No, we still have an immersion no, with uh, computing education. And there, we can uh, multimedia arts will be discussed. And I believe that uh, that's scheduled next week. All right. So other questions? Clarifications no, from our um, audience? Meron pa ba? We still have other questions. So I think there's none. All right. So again, we say thank you to Professor Mark and Professor Kenneth no, for sparing your time for our immersion no, this afternoon. And I believe no, our senior high school students no, are really inspired and they're excited also to um, get to know more about no, those programs no, from the College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you so much, sir. All right. So this time, let's go to our mentee. All right. So I believe na gusto nyo din to. You're excited on this. Please go to mentee.com and then um, use the code one five seven six three triple one. Okay. So questions here are, of course, no from the um, discussion of our two professors a while ago about arts and sciences. Okay, so we need players no, from our um, students who are here in our Zoom. Again, go to menti.com and then um, use the code 1576-3311. And of course, kung sino yung number one dito, okay, top one will be receiving 100 peso load. All right, so see si Mary Cecil, you can still join Mary Cecil. You can still join and win a prize. Yeah. So others, no, from Kapatagan National High School, Kidapawan, Badas, um, from University of Mindanao Senior High School, from Digos um, City Adventist Academy, you join, guys. No, and you can also let your classmates no join our webinar this afternoon. We still have one topic to discuss. No, before we can give your eva your um. Nito, your um, certificate of participation. Okay. So we need more players. Ali, Abtik, come on, guys, participate. Sayang din ang 100 pesos. Ayan. Go, go, go. Okay. So, ayan. So let's start no, our quiz. Sino Manalo will be given 100 pesos. There you go. All right. So answer fast to get more points. Here's the first question. Which among the following is not an offered program in the College of Arts and Sciences? BS Mathematics, BS Statistics, BA Broadcasting, or AB Policy? 10 seconds to answer. 7, 6, 5, 4. Everyone has voted, and you got the correct answer. It's Bachelor of Science in Statistics. Yeah, that's not part or UM, College of Arts and Sciences, uh, do not offer no, that course. All right, so let's see who is on the leaderboard. Ayun, parang gusto talaga ni Audrey ang 100 pesos. All right, so she's the fastest. Echo is second, and then Aliyah. All right, so again, let's have the second question. Okay, answer fast to get more points. Here's the question. What is the last step in on-the-job training process? And it was discussed by Professor Mark a while ago. So ano yung last step in the in the on-the-job training process? Is it verification, deployment, validation, internship proper? Three, two, one, and time's up. Most of you says it's validation and you got the correct answer. Seven of you got the correct answer. Ayan. Sige, let's see if it is still Audrey on the top. All right, I think napulihan si Audrey. It's now Alia and then second pa din si Echo. And then Lorea is on the third. All right, sige. Go, go, go. Kaya pa yan. Kaya pa yan, Audrey. All right. Let's have the... Question number three. Answer fast to get more points. Here's the question. What is the possible career path after graduating BA or AB Policy? 
Nagstographer, copywriter, public relations specialist, entomologist. Ayan, it was discussed no, by Professor Ken a while ago. Three, two, one, and time's up. All right. Answer fast to get. Ayun, <laughs> sorry. It's public relations specialist. So, nine of you got the correct answer. Let's see kung top one pa din ba si Alia. All right. So, still, it's Alia. Second pa din si Echo. Ayan. All right, sige, let's see if Aliyah pa din would be on the top in the fourth question. Answer fast to get more points. Here's the question. What is the possible career path after graduating Bachelor of Science in Psychology? By the way, no, uh, recently lang si, si UM has a top notcher for um, BS Psychology, no, psychometrician. So isa din yan sa no, mga career path na pwede niyong tahakin as you will Take no Bachelor of Science in Psychology. So career counselor is the correct answer. So seven of you got the correct answer. Let's see if parts Aliyah sa seven. And is she the fastest? Oh, I think meron namang bagong top one sa ating leaderboard. And that's Brent Dayan. Saan ka galing Brent Dayan? <laughs> You're not in the top three kanina. All right. So yun. And then Lorea de Chavez and then Pagayon is on the third place. We have last question. So you have to retain your place, Brent. Kayang kaya yan. Here's the last question. Answer fast to get more points. Here's the last question. Which among of the employability skills is necessary in taking Bachelor of Science in Mathematics? Ayan. So still, Professor Ken no, uh, discussed now, all these employability skills na kailangan nyo din, no? Uh, so, go along your journey kung ano yung gusto nyo tahakin na career path. Four, three, two, one, and time's up. Most of you answered the ability. Deal with highly abstract concepts. And you got the correct answer, 11 of you. Okay, let's see if it's still Brent Dayan on the top one place. Here you go. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so don't forget. <laughs> if you have problems with your connection, now you can go to our YouTube channel. Now, para you can still join pa din our webinar. <laughs> All right, so gisungog lang tamo. All right, here we go. And our winner for this round of our menti, will it still be Brent? All right, so I think it's Brent. Fastest, all right? Brent is fastest. Brent Dayan, you're the um, winner of this round ng ating online quiz. Congratulations. Please um, chat now your number so that I can um, automatically load no, um, your prize. All right. Asa na ba? Sige, isulat lang. Okay, so again, we say thank you to our speakers a while ago, Professor Mark and Professor Ken. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so we're done with the pre-employment requirements. You've you're done with knowing those career path and employability skills. No, once you will proceed, no those um programs no offered in the arts and sciences. All right, and also you got those skills no that you have to develop. No, para makuha niyo yung gusto ninyo na na um na mga na mga profession no in the future. No, it's a long journey, no, but then it's worth it once you will prepare for it. Sabi nga, ba? Preparation is half the battle, all right? So once you're done with your senior high school, it's another battle that you have to surpass and be able to have that success, all right? So of course, no, in um journeying to your success not of course there's um there would be a lot of people who will help you and one of those of course is um a school no that would like to develop you no in all aspects of your life and that's why 
um, we are here also no, offering this immersion to be able to also help you guys in choosing a university, choosing a school that will help you develop all those skills that you needed in order for you to be employed no, in the future. All right. So this afternoon, no, we're going to talk about no, the University of Mindanao. University of Mindanao is being known no, as first in leadership education with its tagline no, of quality, affordable, and open education. So um, UM has been um, serving the Filipino people, the Mindanaoans, for 75 years. No, from 1946 until now, UM is uh, really doing its best not to give quality, affordable, very accessible no, na education and to all um, Filipinos aiming for a college degree. So if you want to pursue your, your um, a higher education, no, um, you can also consider University of Mindanao. And why you should consider or why you should choose University of Mindanao? I'll just give you the four of the um, reasons or more reasons why you have to choose UM. First reason is that a UM no, is a leading private institution in the region no, with, with uh, its a lot of um, accolades and also accreditations in order to just give the quality education no, to, to every uh, student. No? UM is the first no, in... Um, um, well, UM is the first no, to uh, have uh, granted this um, institutional ISO no, 9001-2015 certification, and this certification is an international standard certification. And here in Mindanao and Visayas, it's UM, no, yung first. Aside from that, first to UM, and only school granted with category A no, of the Commission on Higher Education. Ayan. So, si Commission on Higher Education, siya yung um, bali, office no? or um, um, a department no? for for college no and universities dito naman sa senior high and also a uh, junior high and elementary tawag natin diyan that's deped so once you go to college it's already commission on higher education so si UM ang first and only school granted category A status no by the commission on higher education and aside from that UM is also one of the three universities here in Davao region granted Autonomous status by Commission on Higher Education. So that means you have the authority you know, to, to really um, uh, en encapsulate all those um, subjects you know, that will help you know, the students to really be prepared you know, for, for his or her career. Uh, Chad also recognized UM as a center of excellence you know, for its teacher education, business um, administration, and criminology you know, mga course. And then um, uh, ano naman, um, center of development no, from other uh, na mga programs ng university. UM is also being recognized no, by, by PICAB, no, the Philippine Association. I mean, yeah, the Association, the Philippine Technological Council no, for its um, mechanical engineering and also um, other engineering programs. So that's Philippine Technological um, Council. We are also recognized no, the, the, the PACOCOA no, with the highest number of accredited programs in Davao region and second in the country. So madaming programs accredited no, si, si UM. No? Number one si UST, then second to that in the country, it's UM. So really UM, no, as a private institution in the region is really leading and it's very true. Uh, UM is very true to its um, vision no, of giving quality education based on this um, accreditations that na nakukuha niya for 75 years na na, and course coming. Right. Uh, second also reason why you should choose UM in terms of pursuing your higher education because of its flexible schedule through its term system. So I'll just explain to you what term system is. So right now, in, in senior high, you have this um, semestral, tama? You enroll in eight subjects, and all those eight subjects are being covered for six months, diba? And all of those subjects also, 
no, will have their quiz, will have their exam, and so on and so forth, mga activities. And that's why you say, oh, burn out na kami masyado kasi madaming mga activities, madaming deadlines na binibigay. So, um, UM has a, tawag nito, has a parang, answer to that problem and that's through uh, through term system anong mangyayari sa term system the term system will be divided into two the one semester will be divided into two terms so that's why there's what we call the first term and second term so sa first term you will just be uh, focusing on four subjects so eight subjects pa din yung enroll mo but then in the two and a half months of that one semester four subjects lang take mo. So you'll focus on those subjects. After two and a half months, you'll have another four subjects that you're going to focus on. So imagine that one. So very uh, less hassle for you to study. Kasi nga, four lang. Sharo with that four subjects, hindi ka makatanong o study. So I believe you can do so. So that's why it's very flexible. And what is good is that another, because of term system, you can also choose no? Because a uh, uh, very flexible talaga ang schedule ni UM. Kasi you can choose whether you want to take all those subjects in the morning, afternoon, or evening. So since you're going to take four subjects in two and a half months, that means you'll be in school for four hours only. One hour per subject. And after that, pwede ka nang uh, mag-study, no? pwede kang mag-work, or pwede kang gumala if you want to. No? So... That means very flexible talaga siya. So if you're a morning person, you enroll in those subjects in the morning session. Pero kung hindi ka naman masyado makapag-isip during the morning, mas magaling ka during the evening or afternoon, then you can have a schedule on that. So imagine that one, very flexible. So kaya, no, madaming um, uh, nag -e enroll no, from UM because... Um, yung plano nila after senior high school, aside from pursuing their their course or their their career, they would also like to have their work no, to sustain their needs and also for schooling. So if you're having that kind of mindset right now, you can actually um, consider UM no? para ma-fulfill mo yung gusto mo, yung mga plans mo no? once you will be graduating on your senior high school. So UM can help you with that. All right. And aside from that, UM is the most affordable private university. And before you no, know, we will discuss that one, I would just like to emphasize no bakit ganito, bakit term system ang ginamit ni UM so that you can um, focus, no, aside from that, no, you can really uh, give attention no to to your um, um, studies and of course, no, yun, maging there's a quality um nito, a quality education that can that can be given to you once you enroll in the university. It's the most affordable private university in the region. Mind you guys, private university. So you don't compare UM to USEP. No? Aside from USEP is a university, but USEP is a state university. You know? It's a public university. It's not private. You cannot also compare UM to other colleges because UM is a university and at a college. And once you are in a university, of course, no, mahal talaga yan. But then UM uh, is not envisioning to have that very mahal no, na, na um, tuition no? because UM would like to give um, education for everyone. No? That's the reason later, the next thing that I'm going to discuss to you why you should choose UM. So among um, universities, private universities, universities in UM, I mean in the region, UM is the most affordable. All right. So with just no, a very minimal no, 22 to 24K you know, based, of, uh, based on the student accounting office, we can enroll na in one semester for that. All right. So aside from being the most affordable, it has a lot of wide... It has a wide academic programs. So imagine how many colleges nandiyan yan. So kanina, di ba, sa College of Arts and Sciences, so madami masyadong programs. You can um, choose no, based on your interest. And UM no, will help you be able to um, hone you to become a better person, no, a better professional in the future. And if you want to know more about the programs offered by the university, you can just go to www you mean the now that edu that ph para al malaman niyo ano yung mga academic programs and what is good with um because 
uh, aside from its wide academic programs, it has also a wide no um um location. Imagine you've seen naman siguro a while ago sa ating video kung gaano kalaki si UM. So yan si College of Arts and Sciences Education. Andun yun siya sa isang building, DPT building. Um it's a, a very big building and yang si accounting education it's another building na naman so kung makita niyo siguro yung mga other universities na no, dami masyadong uh, building ganyan din si UM and once you enter University of Mindanao maka worry mo niya 28 hectares no kapuyag baktas oy <laughs> no but then what is good with UM um, UM has an e car so libre yan siya so pagpasok mo sa gate doon yung e car mo mo uh, mo ano ka mo sakay ka sa e car and then sabihin mo lang ito na building and then yun pwede na kay ka mo ato dito na less hassle but if you want to exercise then you can do that also <laughs> no sa UM pwede kayong magbaktas there's a marathon actually in UM pag malate na <laughs> dami ang marathon because nga ang laki talaga ng campus and madaming mga um mga um, tables and chairs na available no so can, so that you can study well in a very um very conducive very environmental no na, na facility or nang nang place ng university of Manila. All right. So aside from that, no, you can learn anywhere as I have mentioned a while ago because nga ang laki masyado ng UM. And aside from that because of this pandemic, UM also no purchased no a learning management system that is also aligned no with international standards. Aside from paper, gumagamit si UM ng Blackboard um, Learning Management System na here in Davao Region, I think dalawa lang na school na ang gumagamit niyan and, and isa na doon si University of Mindanao. Yun yung ginagamit si Blackboard LMS. You can search on that. Um, international universities no, are the one using that one. And whether it's face-to-face -face or online, UM can help you um, giving a quality education. All right, so we can still um we shall wait no for whatever na mga um ano ng government no mga announcement ng government with regards to the classes natin no we don't know after um this few days na kung full blow na talaga yung face to face so basically once you graduate senior high and then you enroll in UM maka face to face na tayo but for us of the moment no wala pang mga announcement no kasi si UM Uh, nagbe-base lang din siya. Gusto na talaga niya mag face-to-face. -face, but of course, we have to follow the protocols no, of the city government of Davao and even the, the IATF. All right. Okay, so UM also, one of the reasons that why you should choose UM because UM has this what we call an open education system. Open edu uh, UM is an open education university. That means na there's no entrance exam in UM. Everyone is welcome, whatever is your race, whatever is your age, no? whatever is your status, or ano yung a grade mo as long as you pass no? on your senior high school, you can join or you can enroll in UM whatever course no? that you want to. No? Sa ibang university, no? they will be the one to choose for you. No? Okay, ito, ito yung grade mo, ito lang yung course mo. But here in UM, kahit ano pa yan, as long as you want to pursue that 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 course you can enroll right so walang discrimination si UM why in that manner walang entrance exam okay wala entrance exam kasi mag-ask mo ay na ba entrance exam wala okay as long as pasar ka ala alang imong card no you bring those other requirements good moral birth certificate and others no you can enroll na in UM and aside from that That is good. So, tingnan nyo naman dyan sa, sa picture. No, yung student, wala siyang uniform. No? Walang, walang uniform si UM. So, that means OOTD every day. <laughs> right. So, bakit ganyan? Why is that so? Because UM is also um, adhering no, to the international standards. So once you go to outside of the Philippines, yung mga university doon, wala naman talagang uniform. No? They can have their own um, fashion statement. So ganyan din sa UM. Though meron lang mga restrictions, no, of course, uh, we have to have this what we call the sensi because once you go to college, no, you're preparing yourself to become professional. So dapat yung dating din natin, though hindi tayo naka-uniform, 
So, decent pa din. So, that we can be appreciated by the people around us. So, yun yung nakaganda, no? Once you enroll in UM, yes, once you want to pursue your higher education in the University of Mindanao, you will not be discriminated. No? Everyone is welcome in the University of Mindanao. And so, because of that, no? Of that kaning um, manner, no? In the UM, no? Wala sa... So, a no to discrimination si UM. Imagine mo naman yung naging result ng ganon. That everyone has a chance to really pursue no, what they want to. More than 120 top notchers since 2014 ang na-produce ni UM. And imagine guys, yung mga nandyan, not all of those are very achievers during their college. Yung mga ano lang, mga average lang. No? Hindi lang talaga sila, wala talaga sila sa limelight. But during the, the board examination, they get the top one, top two, top four. And what is good with UM is nagbibigay siya ng incentive. No? Pwede that you will be the next top one and you will receive a half million pesos. No? Uh, and then, yung president pa talaga ng university ang may magbibigay niya sa'yo. Diba? Diba? Ang ganda ng smile nila. Imagine, may check nila. No? Because nga, they, 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 they top no, their... Um, respective no na mga board exams. So if you're aiming for that also, no an incentive uh, si UM lang gumagawa ng ganyan ng mga incentives no sa mga sa mga top notchers, no from 1 to 10 yan siya. Okay? So mag-start sa half million and pababa and then 6 to 10 it's 50,000. So sino mang magbibigay ng 50,000 sa you once you become top notcher. So it's only UM. So if you're pursuing those board courses na mga na mga programs, no, you can have the chance to have this check. Eh. All right? So let me kiss like mga smile. So with that guys, no, with those reasons, no, you can say that you can be assured that choosing UM will be the best decision you will ever make. No, with those reasons that we've mentioned, quality, affordable and open education will be yours. No, and of course, no, your your education will really be in good hands. Okay, so for you to be able to know more about UM, you can visit or also not just visit but follow, like, no, and subscribe our social media pages. We have Facebook, um, we have YouTube channel, we, we also have Twitter, um, Instagram, and we also have TikTok. Okay, so you can visit us at umindanao.edu at umindanao official. A Unimin official. Yun. So I think that's it no, for um, my topic with regards to the University of Mindanao. And hopefully, no, you will choose UM no, on your um, next journey no, sa inyuhang college journey. Okay. Questions. So with regards to um, no, um, accounting, Natin or student accounting, if you want to know more about the fees or mga scholarships ni UM, kindly call this um, numbers. You can screenshot this one. So para maka-avail kayo. No? Like for example, si UM kasi is um, giving um, scholarship, no? academic scholarship to those na, na uh, may highest honor at saka high honor. And if you want to know, if you want to avail that one and to know more about the details, you can um check through calling this um or calling or texting no, these numbers and then if you want to know more about the mga um, requirements no for admission so you can also call these numbers all right so that you will be guided the people no who can um help you guys no with scholarships and others no uh, about your requirements so ito na mga numbers no can accommodate you all right. So, questions. Meron ba? You have questions with regards to um, the discussion? Meron ba? All right. Kung wala na, let's have another quiz. Ayan. Another 100 peso load no, will be given to the winner. Okay. So, sige. Kinsa may mo join, please go to menti.com and then raak. Use the code 9100-1790. Okay. We will have still five questions on this. So based pa din doon sa discussion ko kanina with regards to why choose UM. 
So while no waiting for the players, okay. So don't forget also to write your name. So yung mga ta people from the um uh, YouTube, please go now to um how nito menti.com. Okay, so Ayan. So, we still need other players. Come on, guys. So, yun, si Yanni. Yun pala si Audrey kanina. Si Audrey ba yun nalo? Ay, si Dayan pala yun. Alright. More, more. I want more players. This will be the last, guys. So, please join na. <laughs> Sayang ang 100 pesos. Ayan. Pang internet na din. Pang call, pang TikTok, pang Facebook. Alright. Okay. Meron pa? I need siguro mga 20 players. Sige, dali na guys. We are 40 plus here in our Zoom. Dali guys, abtik, abtik. Dali, dali, dali. Come on, come on. No? We will still be waiting for others. So, wala tulat lang sa kaya ako sa i-load ang price ni Yanni. Alright, so for a while. Sorry, 935. One, nine, seven, seven. Automatic din yung mahatag sa inyo, guys. No? Kay para di lang magulat. No? Lisod kayo na magulat, no? <laughs> Tapos di lang maabot. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, kaysa ba yung mga na-inja na dere? <laughs> Lisod kayo magulat. But you guys, since bata pa kayo, you have to wait. Uh, learn how to wait. Ayan. So, na-load na doon ako siya. Okay. So, we are now 15 na in the Sige, let's have, let's start now. Okay, and let's do this. All right, answer fast to get more points. So, UM offers quality, affordable, and blank education. Look at your phone and start now answering the question. Ayan. Seven, six, five, four. Everyone has voted, and most of you says it's open. Yes. Open education. So open kasi um, everyone is welcome. Whatever race, whatever grades, whatever status you have, you can join with the university. Still, Audrey. Ayan. Ito no, si Audrey. Wala pa rin si Audrey. <laughs> Go, Audrey. <laughs> Pastas ka na, na na question. Okay, let's see kung masustain ni Audrey. All right. Sige. Question 2 of 5. Answer fast to get more points. Okay, UM has no entrance exam. Is this true or false? Let's go. 10 seconds to answer. Seven. Everyone is voted. Says it's true. Yes, walang entrance exam si UM. Okay, so sabihin nyo din sa iba. Ya, no? Yung mga natatakot kasi baka mabagsak sa entrance exam. Do not be worried. May sasalo sa'yo. Ah, then that's UM. Okay. Sige, let's see kung Audrey pa din yung top one. Or di papayag si Brent. <laughs> Gusto pa niya ng another 100. Okay, sorry Brent. It's still Audrey on the top sa second question. Okay. And someone from UM Maine. Okay. Namin <laughs> pagkagkuhan ha. Um, pangalan, someone from UM Maine. Hi, someone from UM Maine. You're also fastest here ha. Okay. So let's see. Let's have another question. Okay, answer fast to get more points. Here's the question. UM has how many terms in one semester or one sem? Look at your phone. Three, two, or four? Four, sorry, four. <laughs> four terms, what I mean. Five, four, three, two, one, and time's up. Everyone has voted. Yes, two terms in UM. So, yun, ang one semester is divided into two. Okay, for you to focus on subjects and for you to really pursue no? your, your other things that you want to in life while having your um, college. Okay, let's see kung si Audrey pa rin sa list natin. Hey, 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 let's see. All right, I think it's Audrey pa din. But Rahima is on the second. Go, Rahima. Kaya mo yan. Okay. Next, four of five. Answer fast to get more points. Here's the question. 
UM has school uniform. UM has school uniform, true or false? So, my uniform ba si UM? Everyone has voted and false. Yes, you got the correct answer. Let's see kung si Audrey pa din. Kasi walang uniform si UM. So, OOTD every day. Ayan. Okay. So, I think if Riza is the fastest, but still it's Audrey on the top. Go somewhere from UM. I mean, you are in the top five. Kaya pa yan. <laughs> All right. Have the last question. Okay, enter. Answer fast to get more points. Last question. I'm planning to enroll in UM. Ito yung pinaka, um, pinakalisod na question. <laughs> I am planning to enroll in UM. Two, one, and time's up. All right, so 11 of you no, is planning to enroll in UM. So let's see who's the winner of this um, quiz. All right, so it's Audrey. Okay, congratulations, Audrey. Okay, so please um, give me your number so that I can load na. Okay, ayan. <laughs> Finally, Audrey, no? <laughs> you got the ano, the place, no? Sa last sa last na na play natin online quiz. So, yun guys, so thank you so much, no, for joining our webinar. So, before you leave, please have this evaluation form so that you can get, no, your um certificate. Okay? I believe that other um students, no, they were required no to really get the the certificate of participation on this webinar. So for a while, let me give you the link. No, so kung saan kayo mag-evaluate. All right. Okay, so make sure na ma-answeran ma ma nyo to right away right now so that we will be given the certificate. Okay. Ay, sorry. Ito pala. Okay, so yun ding mga nasa sa YouTube. Okay, for a while, let me post no the link so para ma, ma click niyo so please click it right now para mabigay namin sa inyo ang inyong certificate all right so while waiting no sa inyo na matapos ang inyong um, pag fill up sa form so please take a look at this performance from the University of Mindanao Coral
All right. So thank you very much again, everyone. And enjoy the rest of the day. Amping mga ga and God bless. Again, don't forget to fill in our evaluation for your certificate. Bye-bye, everyone.